All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Leopard Ball Python. And if you've been in ball pythons even for a short amount of time, you've probably heard of the Leopard. And I would say when it comes to ball python morphs, there is pros and cons with every single morph out there. So, for example, the snake around my neck, this is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. And I would say this, the thing that bamboo is really well known for, where it really excels, is it looks really impressive as a standalone morph just by itself without mixing it with any other genes. And this happens to be just a straight bamboo with no other genes in the mix. I'd say you'd probably be hard pressed to find another snake that is a single gene that would look as impressive as Bobby here. And recently I just did a, a video about the champagne. The champagne gene is a little bit more problematic. It, it's pretty tough. Doesn't really mix well with a lot of genes, but there are a few instances where it can really excel. And that is if you're making gray matters with the champagne and the super cinnamon you get a pied looking silver and white snake that is pretty awesome you can't make that snake with any other combo so when you're thinking about combos you're always thinking all right what is the positive and what is the negative do I really want to bring that snake into my breeding operation and when it comes to the leopard I would say the leopard is hands down the king of combos as a matter of fact uh, I, was, I knew it was really good with some combos I didn't realize how awesome Awesome it really was. As a matter of fact, I was looking through here and it kind of blew me away how impressive the leopard is mixing with almost all the other genes that are out there in the ball python industry. So what I want to do today is I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you how awesome and impressive the leopard is. All right, so I'm going to jump over here to the World of Ball Pythons and Morph Market and kind of go back and forth. And they have a lot of pictures on both of these websites where I can actually show you what the leopard does mixed with some of these other genes. And if you take a look at a leopard, I would say a leopard is really close to a normal. As a matter of fact, I've seen some leopards being sold as leopards. And they say, yeah, this is a leopard. And I'm thinking, that looks almost exactly like a normal. And what you really want to look at is the slight variation in the patterns of the leopard and a lot of times it's it's close to being a normal sometimes you'll have polymorphism in the normals where you can actually see differences and you think might something might be in there where it's kind of really tricking you there's nothing really in your normal and then if you're, you're buying a leopard take a look at this one this is actually pretty impressive you can definitely tell there's something going on here and the funny thing is is some leopards have a lot more yellow associated with that particular line of yellow of leopard and some of them like this one are really dark you can I can if someone gave me this snake I'd, I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to actually label this one as a leopard it looks almost like the normal classic wild type until you start mixing it with other genes and usually it's just a slight pattern variation in the base morph and I'd say this is not as impressive as like the bamboo as a standalone base morph but it's really when you start mixing it with other genes that the leopard really starts popping it's pretty amazing so here is the spider ball python. You know, I really like the spiders. It's a really interesting gene. It has a, some interesting genetics. It has, it has a, the, the, they say the super spider is potentially a lethal combination. So if you're into spiders, you never want to breed a spider to a spider. But if you look at this, it almost looks like it's a combination of multiple genes. It looks like it almost has Enchi and Calico and Pastel and a bunch of stuff. And no, it's just one gene that is the spider and look what happens when you actually add leopard to the spider that is really impressive I can't even believe that it makes you know spider is usually pretty dominant you mix it with other things and usually you can see the spider really well and when you mix it with this the leopard really is almost as dominant as the spider and they're almost fighting for dominance where you can see the influence of the leopard and the influence of the spider it's pretty impressive so if you've been into ball pythons, I'm sure you've seen the albinos. This is just what a straight albino looks like. And in most albinos, it has pretty much the regular pattern of a normal. It's just really a color mutation. As a matter of fact, on a lot of these, you can actually see the alien heads, like the Roswell grays, the alien heads that are pretty much typical for your normal ball python. And take a look at what happens when we add leopard to albino. Now, that is a really crazy snake. Essentially what it does is it keeps the same color, but it really jumbles up the pattern. You can see some really crazy patterns when you mix it with the albino. 
you probably know this gene too. This is a pastel, and pastel is like you know the albino, the pastel, and the spider. These are all pretty much the most common genes that you'll find across the board if you go into a reptile store or if you go to like a, a reptile expo or something like that. This is this is pretty much the, the the bread and butter of the ball python breeding industry. People really work a lot with pastel. Look what happens when you mix in leopard with the pastel. That is a crazy crazy looking thing. I can't even believe how crazy and intense that looks just with the leopard and the pastel. It almost looks like there's other genes on top of it. So it's it's really impressive combo. Even with just the pastel, this kind of blew me away. So if you come over here to a fire, I actually produced my very first fires this year. The fire is is not in the blue-eyed leucistic, so you can't make a blue-eyed lucy. But if you mix a fire with a fire, you actually get an all-white snake with black eyes. It's an interesting morph. And usually fire really lightens and enhances, especially if you mix it with yellow belly or pastel or orange dream. You layer on fire and it's even more intense, which is really neat. And look what happens when you take fire and you mix it with leopard so this is a really crazy snake this this is, a, is almost totally unexpected as far as what I would expect the fire and the leopard to be it's really it, it seems like that when you mix leopard with certain genes with, with a lot of genes you're getting a snake that is really high contrast a lot of definition between the darks and the lights it's pretty interesting so here's the Mojave, the Mojave, and I'd say the Mojave is similar to the Lesser. They're both in the blue-eyed leucistic. The Mojave is really common. It's one of those base genes that pretty much most people work with at one point or another. And look what happens when you mix Mojave with Leopard. Now that is a really crazy snake. I've never really seen any combo like that other than something like a Mojave Lesser. And it's interesting. It looks like there's actually more genes in the mix if you look at this and it's just Mojave and Leopard. It's it's a really, really impressive combo with those, just those two genes. Here's another one. This is Spot Nose. Spot Nose is kind of interesting. It's it's almost like the Leopard one. It's, it's by itself and it's a standalone. You really can't tell that it's really that impressive. Not really that much different than a normal. You get a lot of pretty much regular patterns. The thing I didn't recognize on the Spot Nose, it seems like all the Spot Noses have some really interesting head stamps, interesting patterns on the head. So I'm thinking maybe that's the way to actually identify spot nose in your combos is to look at the crazy head stamp. Look what happens when you mix spot nose with the leopard and then you get a really crazy looking snake. This this is pretty amazing. I, I can't even believe the two interact like this. Doesn't really seem as high contrast as some of the other combos but it also could be just the specific lines of leopard and spot nose. And you know, we're really into the pinstripes. The pinstripes is one of my favorite genes, and it mixes really well with some combos. The, the pinstripe is essentially an all gold snake. It has this straight, like a like a stripe down the back. Sometimes it's a stronger stripe than others, and sometimes, like in this example here, it's a pretty strong stripe. Look what happens when you mix leopard with the pinstripe. That is a crazy looking snake. And the thing you have to think about is if you're breeding ball pythons, and you make something like this, the leopard and the pinstripe, you always think, all right, how can I enhance the leopard and the pinstripe? So I'm thinking maybe adding some orange dream, some fire, some yellow belly on top of that and make it really bright and contrasty and maybe a little enchy on top of that just to kind of brighten it up and make it really clean. So here is another morph. Now, a lot of people actually don't talk about butter because essentially butter is the same thing as lesser. It's really two different lines of essentially the same morph. If you're working with butter and lesser, the, the, it's pretty much interchangeable. But in this case, we'll call it butter because I do have an example here of a butter leopard. Take a look at this crazy snake. That is like nothing I've ever seen before. That is really impressive. And you're, you're always thinking, all right, these are the two just two base genes and I'm always thinking what can I layer on top of this to really make it pop but this is a really good start to making some really crazy combos 
So I'm jumping over here now to Morph Market, and I was just kind of curious how many leopards are actually for sale over here. So if you if you actually go into Morph Market and you sort by all the snakes that are for sale and that have been sold, there have been over a hundred thousand ball pythons on this website. It's pretty impressive. And just just looking at the leopards for sale, there's actually one thousand and thirty five leopard and leopard combos that are currently on Morph Market. It's pretty impressive. If you actually come over here and sort by all the leopards that have been sold and for sale on Morph Market, there's actually been almost 5,000 snakes, 4,948 leopard and leopard combos over on Morph Market. So just looking at the sheer number of leopards, you know, a lot of people have really recognized, hey, this is a really good gene to mix with a lot of combos. It's in really high demand, and there's a lot of people producing leopards. So right there, it tells me this is really good gene just because everybody's really excited about it there's a lot of snakes out there seems like there's a really high demand for leopards and leopard combos so I, I kind of want to go through some of these uh, examples first let's go back actually I wanted to kind of show you over here I sorted from the lowest price so if you think about getting into leopard it's actually super affordable anybody can actually get into the bottom before I show you some of the high-end stuff I want to show you kind of the entry level what you can actually get into and they start at Seventy dollars. It's pretty impressive, and you have to think. You know, seventy is also without shipping, and a lot of times they'll reduce the price because you're adding shipping on top of that. And sometimes shipping can be upwards of sixty or seventy dollars. So you're probably looking at a hundred, hundred and fifty to to get into just the leopard with the shipping if you have it shipped to your door, and that's kind of where you would start. So if you look at some of the really high end stuff, some of the potential of the leopard, you think about, all right, I want leopard and then I want to start layering other genes on top. And you can definitely see that it's really kind of a crazy mixed up pattern in a lot of these examples. This one happens to be a pastel leopard highway. And you've seen, probably seen the, the pastel highways. It's just, it's just kind of a, usually just has a, like a spotted line right down the back, usually with a highway. It's almost like a dotted yellow line right down the back of the snake that and, and the leopard completely makes it look just really crazy it is pretty impressive and if you look at some of these prices this one's actually five thousand dollars that is a pretty impressive snake and it's got a lot of genes it's also 100 percent head clown so the head clown stuff you know is, is a little bit higher too this one is really impressive this is a leopard pastel banana so you know the banana is a really strong morph doesn't really mix well with a lot of things i would say because it's really a dominant morph you mix in the leopard and look it even even trumps the banana gene that <laughs> makes it really crazy high contrast it is really impressive how it's working with a lot of these combos Here's another one. This is I just kind of pulled this out. This is this is an impressive snake. I don't know if you could make another one like this, but you can see the definitely see the influence of the leopard. It really breaks up the pattern, makes it really crazy, and it gives it a lot of high contrast. I think the contrast between the darks and the yellows is really coming from the leopard. This happens to be an orange dream fire black pastel leopard trick. Het clown, <laughs> that is a mouthful to say. And if you look at all the genes, you can see that it's just a whole bunch of genes all lined up. And it's a male too, so if you actually actually bought this and bred it even to a normal, you would get uh, you probably never get the same snake twice. It has so many different combos that you could get from breeding, you know, a five gene animal to just about anything else. This one actually is four thousand dollars. <laughs> you see, some of these are really high end, expensive snakes. If you're getting into the multi gene. So this is another one. This is an orange dream, yellow belly, inchy, fire, leopard, het pie. <laughs> that is a mouthful there. That is a really beautiful snake. It almost looks like you could add a little more contrast to this picture and really brighten it up. I don't think this picture does the snake justice. I think it's actually brighter than we're actually seeing here. And the interesting thing is you're actually looking at, uh, you're actually looking at the leopard reduced 
with the Enchi. So the Enchi is essentially a pattern reduction as well. You mix the two together, you're breaking up the pattern and then you're reducing it and you end up with these spots. So if you want a snake with spots, you can take Leopard and then layer on Enchi and then layer on all these different colors to actually get some interesting colors. That's essentially what they did with the Orange Dream, Yellow Belly and Fire. It makes it really bright yellow and really contrasty. It's an interesting snake. So you take a look at this one. This is this is actually the leopard and Enchi as well, layered on with the banana, yellow belly, and orange dream, 100% head pod. Similar snake to the previous one, but it's interesting. There's actually different lines of Enchi's. It looks like there's also different lines of leopard. So the, the way the two interact, this one doesn't have quite the spots that you would expect on a leopard Enchi. I thought that was interesting. So this is really impressive, <laughs> take a look at this. This is an azanthic, and then you add the leopard onto it, which, which makes it, kind of breaks up the pattern and gives it the high contrast. And then you add fire, and fire in azanthic really makes the contrast a lot higher, and it really cleans up the white areas, so it doesn't look like quite a dirty snake <laughs> with all the, kind of the black pixelation through the whites. That is really an impressive snake. This is another one that I thought was really interesting. This is a Super Orange Dream, which is one of the brightest snakes. Again, I don't think this picture does the snake justice. I don't think the exposure is quite right. But then you add a leopard on top of that, and look what it does to the Super Orange Dream. It really makes a dramatic combo. So I'd say this is probably my the crown jewel of the leopard. As a matter of fact, when I first started in, in the ball pythons, I was investing and I was buying snakes, and then this one actually popped up on the internet, and I always wanted to buy this one, but the price was so out of reach. I looked at that and I was like, I want to buy that, and then I looked at the price, and I was like, oh, this snake is six thousand dollars. I don't think I can afford this snake, and it would be really difficult to make. I was trying to figure out how I can actually make one, and the odds are. Are pretty slim because it actually has five genes. This is actually a yellow belly, fire, orange dream, enchi, and leopard. So you can see the enchi and the leopard really are it's breaking up the pattern and then reducing it almost into spots. And then they're layering on the orange dream, the yellow belly, and the fire. You can also do like a pastel too, and that really brings out the really clean, contrast, bright yellow snake, and it really gives it an interesting head stamp. I thought that was kind of cool too. So that is probably the crown jewel of the potential of the leopard. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Jesse B asks, what morph do you think is going to be the next big thing? And that is a very good question. Everybody's always looking for the next big thing. They want to jump on the bandwagon, make a whole bunch of them so they can make some money before, you know, the market gets really flooded and kind of be at the forefront of some of this new stuff coming out. And I kind of gambled on it at the very beginning. When I first got into ball pythons, I, I was kind of looking for something that I thought was going to be the next big thing in ball pythons. And I gambled on the totally scaleless ball python. I thought that was going to be the next big thing. As a matter of fact, there's not a whole lot of them out there right now. I actually paid quite a bit of money for my scaleless head. And actually have to breed two scaleless heads together to get the super scaleless head, which is the same thing as the totally scaleless ball pythons. So the, the cool thing about the scaleless is you can take all the thousands of combos of all the morphs and you can actually redo every single one in the scaleless. So what you're really doing is it's basically restarting the entire ball python industry. That was really what sold me on the totally scaleless. And and we it's pretty much a gamble because it's still new at the very beginning of the totally scaleless. We don't even know. I'm not even sure if anyone's ever bred a totally scaleless to a totally scaleless. So there might be some problems along the way. You never know. It, it's kind of like it's kind of like when they were gambling on the desert gene and they found out that the females were sterile and you get into the project you pay a lot of money you breed it through your collection and then the whole thing tanks because the 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 problem with the infertility of the females and nobody really wants to invest in the project and hopefully that won't happen with the totally scaleless ball python and the next big thing for me here in my collection that I'm definitely going to bring in and I'm going to bring to the shows here in Colorado is definitely going to be the leopard gene let me tell you I have not worked with the leopard gene at all and after what I've seen today, I'm definitely going to invest in a leopard ball python. 
So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.